thank you all. You're so polite. You just as soon as I came up. Um, good, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Sean, and welcome to the 2016 Conscience Taxes for Peace Not War Parliamentary Reception. Um, the reason we're here this evening, really, is to mark 100 years since the Military Service Act was enacted in 1916. Um, it ultimately brought in conscription in World War I, um, changing the lives of millions of individuals and ending the lives of, of many more. Um, but what is forgotten at this time, when the Military Service Act came to force, is a small, tiny part of that called the Conscience Clause. And it would re remake human rights for the next 100 years. Um, every major treaty would include a Conscience Clause, um, including the Uni uh, U U Universal Declaration of Human Rights, the Human Rights Act, uh, and the British Human Rights Act too. Um, and the Conscience Clause was passed um, in a world of conscript armies, and unfortunately, or fortunately rather, no longer exists. Um, but that conscription that it brought in really has never ended. Um, every bullet bomb, every soldier trained in any conflict zone in which British forces are deployed um, isn't there by accident. It is there because each and every one person in this audience has paid for it to be there. Um, and we believe at conscience that this needs to come to an end. Um, conscience was formed in 1979 by Quakers to effect the change that would allow conscientious objectors to redirect the military portion of their taxes towards non-violent methods of maintaining our national security. Um, Ruth Cadbury MP has very kindly to offer a Taxes for Peace bill this year which would enable anyone to, who identifies as a conscientious objector to truly express their conscientious objection in the tax system. We believe in conscience that uh, modest, modest conscientious objection, this would enable a modest, uh, modern conscientious objection to a modern form of conscription. Um, and we are very pleased this evening to enjoy MPs, I think, from, from every part of the United Kingdom, although our Scottish friends haven't arrived. Speeches will last for about one hour, and we'll just run through them as quickly as we can, because <laughs> afterwards we will have drinks again at around 9.30, and we hope that everyone here will stay for that. Um, right, I'd like to invite our first speaker, Ruth Cadbury, MP. Thank you very much, Sean, and I'm absolutely delighted to be here on the night of exactly the 100th anniversary of the Military Service Act 1916 coming into force. And it's also um, for me an opportunity to relaunch, I guess, the Taxes for Peace Bill that I'm going to be bringing to Parliament that Sean mentioned. Um, for those who don't know, um, I'm Ruth Cadbury, um, I'm a Labour MP. Uh, I represent Brentford and Isleworth uh, in West London and have done since the general election of May last year. I'm a Quaker, I grew up in Birmingham and yes, everybody always asks, I am a member of the Cadbury family. <laughs> um, uh, friends, um, we gather uh, this evening to mark what's a really important moment in the history of, of human rights. Um, in a time when war was total and destruction of the nation was both possible and imminent, brave people fought to protect their right to practice their nonviolence. Uh, and uh, I'll quick quote from John Lennon um, uh, that is relevant for them. Um, Peace was, is, is not something you wish for, it's something you make, something you do, something you are, and something you give away. Quakers, amongst many other groups who reject violence as, means to re as the means to resolve conflict, Quakers recognise this. And another key person that we cannot forget tonight is Keir Hardy, the first leader of the Labour Party who fought against the press and at times elements within his own party to organise the first general strike in support of conscientious objectors. On September the 26th, 19, 1915, Keir Hardy passed away in Glasgow, campaigning almost to the end. 
and six months later, the conscience clause, which he fought so hard to see realised, became enshrined in law. The Military Service Act brought in conscription for the first time and, as Sean said, introduced the right of conscientious objection in the UK. And this right matters to me because it mattered to my grandfathers, Paul Cadbury and Edward Ransom, as it mattered so much to many Quakers. That right to conscientious <coughs> objection was won by campaigners and supporters. Like you here tonight, this is what you're doing now. But as we look to the past for guidance, we must also look to the future and ask ourselves, what does the future of conscientious objection look like? This year, perhaps, we're going to have to be making a decision on the renewal of Trident. Possibly, well, the UK's biggest uh, item of world destruction. Um, so your activity, your action, your, uh, your witness to conscientious objection will be important this year. And it just shows that since conscientious objection uh, came in, the nature of warfare has changed just so much. Gone are the conscript armies of World War I and II, and of national service, of course, but in their place, we have a conscription of our taxes that are used to fund the most devastating and high-tech weaponry in the world. That's Trident, its replacement, and quite a few other uh, bits of kit. With this for new form of conscription must come a new form of con conscientious objection. And that's why we need the Taxes for Peace Bill. Some of you may have been at John Macdonald MP's launch of the bill towards the end of the last parliament. John is now quite busy as our shadow, <laughs> uh, uh, as our shadow chancellor. So I will now be sponsoring the bill uh, with the very active support of Conscience and, and thank you uh, for all the technical advice uh, you're, you have given and I'm afraid you will be giving me, um, uh, putting together uh, the parliamentary legal stuff with the technical stuff that we'll need for speeches and briefings and so on is going to be really valuable uh, and is more than the capacity of my staff and also of course with the knowledge and expertise of my staff which they don't have. Um, the bill, if enacted, would allow anyone on the grounds of conscience the right to redirect the military portion of their income taxes towards a non-violent means of maintaining our national security. It differs from the decision uh, and the work of and the campaign of some Quakers back in the 70s who withheld the defence element of their tax. They held it. They just didn't pay it. The bill I'm promoting allows a conscientious objector to ask that that element is spent on peacekeeping, for which there is a specific heading in the Ministry of Defence budgets. And I think that's a very positive and proactive way of demonstrating uh, one's conscientious objection through, through the payment of tax. In an age where people are more and more concerned with spending their money ethically, I believe this is an idea whose time has come. I hope this uh, bill will be read uh, on the week following Conscientious Objectors Day. Can't guarantee it though. Um, but, you know, either way, we symbolise that we stand in the same movement with the conscientious objectors of the past and of the present who do not want, do, did not and do not want their labours conscripted into violence. Now, there will be criticisms, and let's just cover some of them now. Um, People have said you can never hypothecate. You can't dedicate a particular bit of money to a particular spend. Yet this government hypothecates. We have um, our TV licenses is hypothecated for funding for the BBC. The congestion charge is a form of hypothecation <laughs> approved by government. Gift, get, gift aid, of course, is another. And even more in recently, what we've come to know as the tampon tax. Um, friends, if we can hypothecate for women's san sanitary products, we can hypothecate for peace. <laughs> People have said it's too hard to calculate, but the government, for the first time, already calculates individual income tax spending on the Ministry of, on, on MOD funding. And if you've received your annual tax breakdown 
uh, you'll see how much of your tax payment goes on defence. People have said that if everyone enjoys the security of military provides, then everyone should pay for it. I do want to pay for national security. In fact, I want to strengthen it. The Taxes for Peace Bill does this by investing in the most effective form of defence, conflict prevention. <laughs> Another charge is that the bill would set a precedent for others to redirect their taxes, plus opening the floodgates to other objections to government expenditure programmes. Now, although many may wish to divert their taxes for political reasons, the right to refuse to kill or to pay others to kill on our behalf uniquely rests on a basic human right that is recognised in both domestic and international law. We call it conscientious objection. It took Quakers over 350 years to get that humble right established in law. My party was founded on the principles of peace and internationalism and stands proudly in that tradition. The Taxes for Peace Bill can usher in a new chapter in the history of the conscientious objection movement. After all, if we get the world we pay for, I want to be able to pay for, pay for peace, prosperity and justice. And doesn't that sound like a good investment? Thank you very much.